Welcome to Big Flippers Episode 2. I am Mike, your friendly host, and in this episode, we're going to begin the restoration process of a 1995 AMAC Big 28 mixing board. If you'd like to delve into the wild world of restoration of 90s electronics, then stick around. This will be exciting. This Big 28 is finally back up in New York State, where it is now powered up in the lab here in Lightning Boy Audio. As you can see, it is malfunctioning. These are the lights for the virtual dynamics. When the desk is powered on, whether it's connected to a computer or not, it makes no difference. Those lights should just flash once when it powers on and then they turn off. Uh, they should not stay on. And in this case, it's just bugging out on this bank of eight. So there's three dynamics modules buried underneath the channel strips and they're obviously not doing their job. Maybe it's caps, but it could also be a voltage issue. This is one of the power rails maybe a little bit too low or something, and that's adjustable. So I'll take a look at that first. Sorry for the noise in the background. Paul is making audio transformers like a mofo. Boom. The desk is on and the multimeter is probing the five volt rail. When I first turned it on, you notice the dynamics lights were all turned on. They were just staying on or acting funny, malfunctioning. My suspicion was the voltage was a little low, and I was correct. When I measured it initially, the multimeter read 4.5 volts, and the dynamic system really requires a full range of five volts to operate. So when that voltage is um, sufficiently below five volts, the whole system malfunctions. Back over at the power supply though, you have adjustments for the different voltages, and just using a small screwdriver such as this, I was able to tune the voltage for all of the rails. They're all just a little bit off, so now everything's in check, and it looks like this desk is in better shape than I originally was thinking. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I was able to get the end panels on and the front panel that I made for my original Big 28. All that stuff's mounted on here and I'm working on rebuilding the fader banks and that is taking the faders out, cleaning them, lubricating them, putting them back together, hooking them back up to the fader banks and then rewiring the whole thing. And these are new fader banks, not necessarily new, these were from a recall. The same brand and same era. The uh, Stereo Master is also currently rebuilt. The next thing to address was the battery, which I snipped off with some wire cutters when I was down at Ben's studio in St. Augustine, Florida. It was a good move at that time because it had started to corrode and it looked like it was leaking. So if it had gotten any worse, it would have corroded the circuit board. Thankfully, I caught it at the right moment. Now I decided to put a new battery in, but mounted on a tether and it's wrapped in heat shrink tubing and held down by Velcro. It's a good solution in my opinion, if you wanna have that battery on there. Really the battery's main and only purpose is to remember the mute buttons where they're pushed in and when they're not, when you power the desk down and then turn it back on. This is a basic kind of recall, just in case you know you didn't have a session saved and you have a mix currently up on the desk. So it's a handy little tool to have. Obviously the desk will work without that battery in there, just won't remember the mute settings. So now that that's all checked out, I've got the master module rebuilt. I'm just gonna install that and start moving on from there to the actual channels themselves. It takes Paul over an hour to clean all of the knobs and buttons for just a single channel strip by hand. It takes me just five minutes with the ultrasonic cleaner. This is channel 12. As you can hear, it sounds pretty messed up. If the gain is actually turned up all the way and the output is very low. So engaged and we can test it out to confirm we have a channel that kind of works just not too good yeah channel 12 sounds like butt and in the next episode we're going to tackle that turn it into something special and then compare the sound of that to a stock channel that's in perfect working order i think that'll be a nice comparison for us and we can then 
decide if it's really worth it to make any kind of upgrades on a vintage mixing board like this. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please give us a thumbs up if you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.